if you're doing a lot of shows, setting up your stuff so it's already on the displays and can be stored that way in your car is really helpful. These giant displays are being held in place by a rubber band, which is excellent. These earring displays in this tote bag are held on by the backing stoppers of the earrings. Also, there's cardboard in between so they don't jangle against each other. Very, very smart idea. Fitted tablecloths can cost more, but are very worth it because the wind is always your worst enemy with outdoor shows. If you don't want to spend for the fitted tablecloths, I just buy very, very, very inexpensive bed sheets, but I will poke holes in the corner and use twistums or whatever to tie the corners down to the legs so you get the same effect. Otherwise, the wind is going to be whipping those tablecloths all over the place. This is also good. You want dark, tan, or neutral colors for your tablecloths. You don't want to confuse people with a bunch of different colors, and you definitely don't want fancy patterns on your cloth material. You want all of the person's eye to be brought to the jewelry, not distracted by your table. The wind is currently taking this tent away. People will buy weights sometimes, like this. It's pretty much BS. Like, you want a bungee cord or something substantial, like a fence or your vehicle. These price tags are not good. They're big, they're gaudy, and they distract from the beauty of the pieces. They're also bright white, which distracts from the elegance of the dark silhouettes and the dark tablecloth. If you're gonna have larger tags, you wanna have like a dark brown or neutral color, or maybe a purple with white lettering, something that isn't as jarring. Sometimes it's okay to not use price tags at all. It causes conversation to be had as people are asking, how much is this, how much is this? Sometimes it gets annoying for people because they'd rather just scan across the whole thing and figure out what they want. So there's a, an argument for and against price tags, but in general, if you want to have really pretty elegant jewelry, you want very teeny tiny ones that are like not really popping out at you. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a price tag across the whole display. This is less distracting because you can see, oh, all of these earrings are 10 and now you can just shop and not have to think about it and not have to see a bunch of price tags in your face. The more inventory you have, the better. The rule of thumb is basically if you want to sell one item, make 10. If you want to sell 10 items, make 100. If you want to sell 100 items, make 1,000. Check your numbers when you go to a show. You'll find that they're probably very close to what I'm saying. Sometimes it's nice to have different things broken up, but you don't want to be too jarring. So if you have dark, dark black silhouettes and then bright white silhouettes, it's better to group the white ones together and the black ones together. You don't want to go black, white, black, white, because again, that distracts the eye away from the jewelry. You want to move everything as close to the edge of the table as is safe. You want it in their faces and you don't want them to have to reach to feel comfortable touching stuff. You want to encourage them to touch as much stuff as possible. You can even joke with them and say, please touch everything. I literally had a sign that said, please touch everything. This is the traditional C, like the letter C setup where you put your tables all around the inside periphery of your tent so people can walk in and feel the comfort of your tent and look around at everything. That's actually what you don't want to do. You can't see their inventory until you get inside. It's very dark a lot of times. You don't have the benefit of sunlight hitting everything and nobody can see what you're selling until they walk right up on top of you. And if they're in a conversation looking straight ahead, they'll walk right past your tent. This is the kind of setup you want. You want everything out in front of your tent. You want everything in people's faces they can't walk past it without it catching their eye. And you can see this from all the way down as you're walking up. You can see this all the way at the end of the block. You can start to see the jewelry glimmering when you're like 15 booths away. And it draws you in, it draws you into it. And then there's plenty of room when you spread out like this. Five, six, seven, ten people can be looking at the same time and they're not all cramped inside of some tiny little space and saying excuse me and then walking away. I'm walking up, I see her stuff right away. This is good. I see this stuff because even though it's inside their tent, they didn't put the walls up. I don't see this guy's stuff. I'm walking past, I'm having a conversation and I missed it. This, this is good because it's out in front. There should be more, the table should be pushed up further. There should be stuff more catching your eyes. This is good. This is very good. Very well done. This is good. And here we are again. And if all this stuff was inside the tent, like most people do, you would walk right past having a conversation with your friend. You'd glance for a second and then just keep walking. 
this is what we're talking about. You don't see anything until you're all, already almost past. Your favorite piece. You don't have to get anything. Just just point out your favorite piece. My favorite piece? And we'll write it down. Yep. Anything purple. <laughs> Whoa. Those are cool. These are going for eight. Is that right? Or are they ten? Um, eight is fine. These oh, those are six. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, so these... These were 10. Look at those little flowers. I can't see, I've got my glasses. I can see that it's a little flower, yeah. There's a, there's a, a rose up here I and then there's like that. a flower petal there. Can we do six Pretty. for her? Oh yeah. We're just six if you want. If, yeah, if you, like. you know, I don't need any tears. I mean, I know you're trying to make Where did you get the but... coffee at? Uh, it's cider. No way. No way. <laughs> they have cider? Yeah. Take care, guys. Did yeah, you guys have a favorite? Everybody. You too. Oh, that's our last trip. Five, if you want. I have a hard time with earrings, so. Oh, like really? Pretty, yeah. Do you do clip on sometimes? Or? No, it's I have to have like the oh, allergenic. Yeah. Does that work? Let me see. This is <laughs> the only problem with these. I have to say, is that when you hold them up to your ear, they look too amazing. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why they look so good. I, it must be, it seems to be people with dark hair. Thank you. Alright, have a good holiday. You don't have too much of a coat on. Oh, no. You're toughy. I don't wear coats. We're trying to figure out what, what would be your favorite piece of the whole booth. If someone said, here's a coupon, pick anything you want. Oh my gosh, that's, yes. You, this is like, I can tell, this is your colors. This is, what is this going? This, this is, uh, Actually, let me get, they're all pretty, because this is all good. Both of them? But if you, if you could only pick one, this one would be the one probably. Yeah, probably. This is 25, it's been so slow here, I'm gonna do 20 for you if you want, and no tax, just 20 even. Let me just show you real quick. Okay. It's got the beads going all the way up, even on the sides. Is this the one you wanted? That's, yeah, yeah. Um, I, well, the, the dangle part, the pendant part is shorter. Let me see. This is... Yeah, it, it doesn't dangle quite as far down. I really like those little side pieces. That's really cool. You like that one a little better? That's 25, but 17. 17 for you. I'm just walking around. I'll be back. Okay, what's your name? Marianne. Ma we don't have to. We're going to write Marianne on them? <laughs> so, no, definitely hang them up. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. I don't know why people make displays so they don't fit different sizes of necklaces. They usually only fit chokers. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people have to do is put backings on their displays. These were screwed in. Mm -hmm. So you can hang longer necklaces and they hang the right way. This is a great idea with these little ones. I wouldn't clasp it to the piece because then in the moment when you want to grab it off and put hold it up to the person's neck really quickly, it's those wasted few seconds where they start to hesitate. You want to go really quick. So an, a hook here where you can just hang it over the hook but then pull it off real fast would be a little better. I love these. I'm like, oh, this must take so much time. What is, what is this? That's 25. You know what? It's been so slow here today. Can I just hold up to your wrist real quick? Look at those nails. Oh, look at, oh, you don't like bracelets, do you? Does she like bracelets? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Oh my, you know what? You're the bracelet collector. You're the, you're the bracelet queen. So, I tell you what. Um, we, we might need to add a couple links there. I, just, I think she made this one a little small. Um, 25, 18 for you. Okay, you start? Yes. And you got that one, and you got that beautiful bracelet. <laughs> Wonderful. So it is absolutely freezing. This is like seven days before Christmas. There's hardly anybody out here. It's not well organized. This should be an indoor show. And we're an hour and a half in. I've been saying, if you plan this right, there's no reason you shouldn't be making 200 an hour at any craft sale if you follow these steps. And hour and a half in, and what's your total right now? 461. 461. This incredibly sparse, empty show 
we've basically, what, what, like, we've been hitting about 60%. Like, for every 10 customers that come up, we get six of them. And we're giving discounts left and right, and we're still getting people walking away with, like, $75 per person.